Mike. All right. How's everyone doing? Let me know if you can hear me. Let me get comments on here. And one more banner. There we go. All righty. Hey, thanks everyone for showing up tonight. Y'all are awesome. I already see a bunch of you in the chat here. Let's see. Karen. Retta. I'm glad you finally got that to work, Retta. I think there's already like six or seven people already in it. Anybody just joining in? Brad from Hidden Harvest Grow Lights is giving away two of his grow lights. And uh, the link's down in the description. At any time, y'all can jump down there and click over and, and go ahead and, and enter for that. Let me see. And is Brad here yet? Let's see. George is here. How are you doing, George? Hello, buddy. CB, how are you doing? And if I miss anybody, forgive me. There's a bunch of you in, here, in the chat already. And John, aloha, peeps. My family's from Hawaii on my mom's side. Got a lot of family uh, on the big island. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and get started because there's about like 30 something people in here and, and there's no way I'm going to keep up with the chat. But uh, Brad, uh, quick question. And if you could like either comment there or if you'd like to come in the live stream, I can put you a little. Um, let me try and do that real quick. And after Brad, if anybody else wants to jump in the live stream and just say hello or tell me what y'all have been growing or if you have any questions, we can do that too. So it's just not me talking. But let me put this in here. Brad, I was going to ask, some people asked, I didn't know, was this just uh, USA or Canada too? Or uh, where do you ship to? I had, I had put USA only. I didn't know. that that is going to be a i'll put it up on a banner here how's that y'all holler at me if, if brad answers me when i'm busy fooling around with this to be on the show does anybody want to go live and hang out with me i got good news and bad news what do y'all want first good news or bad news Brad is awesome. USA only. Okay, so I did put USA only. I'm sorry if y'all are in Canada or, or Germany or Australia around the, around the world. Maybe we'll do something in a future giveaway and uh, get something for, for some of y'all. But uh, right now, the grow lights is just United States only. The shipping is just like killer trying to get stuff somewhere. I've, I've been trying to um, send some people. They ask me for grow boxes or nutrients, and I try to help people out. But man, just uh the shipping costs more than the stuff we're actually sending sometimes um brad this is like i said this is the link and i'll post it in the chat again maybe my wife will post it there once in a while if you want to jump on here with me and explain your grow lights a little i know that you can do it a lot better than i can but there's a lot of people who jumped on here i'm sure because they've seen your grow lights and that they they've been over to your channel and they want to win one so a lot of them know it but there's a couple of people might funnel in here that have no idea of anything about it. I know that you've said it's like a full spectrum. And if people don't know that that plants need certain lights, a uh, certain wavelength of the light, the light is made up of different wavelengths, all your red, orange, blue, yellow. And basically it's mostly red and a little blue, but that's why some of our grow lights, if you get the ones that are dedicated right now, they kind of look purple and your place looks like a disco. And Brad's one is a, uh, doesn't give off that purple hue, but it's a full spectrum light. And, and he's actually run tests and make sure that, that these LEDs, that the LED light that he's made is actually giving off the wavelengths that the plants actually need. So you run it with lower energy because you're not wasting all the other wavelengths. So I think I'm explaining that right, Brad. If not, just let me know. And if anyone has a question, I think down in the description, I put Brad's channel. If you haven't been over to Hidden Harvest Grow Lights, 
head on over there and, and you can ask him all the questions. Like I said, he's more of an expert on it. Um, I know a little bit, but like I said, I don't want to mess it up and give you all false information. Let's see. I'll put it up here. Bow. They're designed to replicate sunshine. They're done with white LEDs, different Kelvin temps, university tested. There you go. So it's not like something somebody just made up on a fluke. I saw, uh, I've been watching Brad for a while and, and seen all the tests that he's been running. And if you guys going over to his channel, um, if you bear with me for a second, how many, how many of you have been over there to, to um, Brad's channel, Hidden Harvest Grow Lights? How many came from there? Just kind of put like me or, or do like a one in the chat or something like that. Let me find it here. Give me one second. And has everybody signed up already? There we go. All right. Share the screen. Tab. Me, one me. CB knows him. Greta. Okay, so a lot of you know him. This is his channel over here. Let me get that comment off. Yes. Hidden Harvest. 100%, right? All right, so there's CB's channel. Like I said, if you all have questions about it, let's put on videos here. Just head over there and you can see this is all the stuff he's been growing in his... I guess that's your, is that your basement or a dedicated room, Brad? And uh, it's got this neat looking thing, River Ponics set up. And uh, you can go over there and check that out with them too. It's actually kind of like an NFT system, I think. And it's running off of organic um, nutrients. Like I said, correct me if I'm wrong, Brad, but he's got like a little bubbler and an aerator and it runs through there. And you can see all the stuff he's growing down in his basement. is just awesome. So let me pop back up on here. Let's see. I'm doing more videos soon. Oh, I'm sorry about that, Brad. I knew you were gone, gone for a little while. Let's see here too. Keith, hi, Mike. I started my hydroponic garden about a month ago. Have learned so much from you. Appreciate that. That's all we want is everybody to just get out there and have fun and, and grow. I heard about his lights and watched his videos the other day. Cool. There's a new one there, Brad. All right. So everybody everybody knows about the contest and they all know about going down in the description and, and signing up for it. And like we said, it's only U it's USA only. So if anybody like signs up from somewhere else, um, we're going to, you know, just have to not not use that one. And we'll have to pick someone from the United States. Let me see what my wife's saying. Oh, Gail Bailey donated $1.99. Thank you. Super chat. Appreciate that, Gail. Um, I'm on uh, StreamYard and I can't see my YouTube chat right now. So my wife's telling me. So if I miss y'all, don't don't think that I've, you know, missed you or forgot you. Let me see if I can put my channel up here. But I really do appreciate that. see if we're still sharing my screen come back to me there we go yeah and keely if you see if anybody likes super chats like that just let me know and and so i can let them know that i really do appreciate that let's see brad brad you should jump in the stream yes Okay. Yeah. So y'all jump down there, enter that. And like we said, Brad's going to give away two of those. That's, that's pretty awesome of him. He contacted me not too long ago and told me, you know, let's do a giveaway. And, and while we were talking the other night, he said, let's make it two. So that that's pretty cool. Cause these things retail for close to $90, I think. And for him to give away, you know, two of those to y'all that that's awesome. Now, if y'all, whoever wins, you don't have to do anything, but when you get it, It'd be nice if when you do your little setup, take a picture like on Instagram and Brad's on Instagram like a lot um, and tag Brad over there. 
And um, once you get stuff growing, you know, do the same thing, share the pictures with us and then join my keep on growing group and share pictures of what you all are growing. Brad's growing 14 tomatoes, six peppers and a new grow. I'll be posting soon. Cool. Awesome. And then I didn't see Brad. I might have to go back and check 28 entries. Awesome. And uh, I didn't see when you were doing like the arrow garden thing too, like a test, a side by side. Uh, I saw it started and I haven't uh, seen like updates on that. I didn't know if he still did updates. Corey, I just entered. Awesome. Good luck. Good. Mike, what's up, Mike? Big Mike. Wow, 90. Oh, okay. I thought you were talking about the temperature. The uh, I know I've been a little lax on uh, um, videos lately. I'm going to have some more coming up. I filmed a little, but in the meantime, I did. I started another project called the Creator Spotlight Show about helping creators. And my wife, who's in the um, chat, Art is Fun. Uh, that's my wife. She decided to start a channel too, so I've been helping her. So I've been kind of stretched in and on top of that, uh, it's turned out to be over 90 almost every day. And it was up to 99 today. So the, the feel like temperature is, um, let me get that. That's Brad. That's Brad's Instagram. Y'all go check him out there. And like I said, when, when y'all do your little growing in that tag him, tag us and that we'd love to see what y'all are growing. Um, but it's been, it's been like the feel like temperature is over hundred and it's just been like real brutal and just trying to keep everything, you know, growing out there. And that's why like Brad, I know you're growing indoors and in the air conditioning. So, uh, that's one, uh, benefit of having these grow lights and growing indoors, uh, down here in Florida, it's just gotten really hot. And I think the whole week we're going to cool down a little Monday and then it's going to be right back up to 99 again. And this is only May. We still got June, July, August. September, you know, and September until we get to, you know, start, start really getting back into growing. So right now we're just struggling along trying to keep everything alive, but we still got some stuff out there. Those tomatoes were doing cool. I, I was surprised because I don't know a lot about tomatoes. And if you guys in the chat or any, anybody knows, um, I think that it, after they get over 80 something degrees, they don't flower or, or they don't set fruit. And we were in the eighties and, and these and the hydroponics were still sent fruit. And I still have small tomatoes, but now we've gone up to the high nineties and I don't think it's going to do anything else. So I might harvest all of those and start over. Uh, anybody else growing tomatoes outside right now, like in the South where it's really hot or out West, I know it's like really hot out West. How'd you let us going in those temps? Let's see. Were you asking me, George? Um, I don't have too much lettuce going because it's like I said, it just gets too hot or they just, they just bolt. I've got a little pak choy, but made a mistake with them. And I put them near when I put them right outside my kitchen door so that we could go outside and just pick, pick them. And I kept getting like the cabbage moths and these little caterpillars every day. I go out and pick them off. And, and the next night there'd be more and two or three more plants would be gone. And, and they basically ate them all, but I figured out I was really dumb. I put them by our kitchen window. And every night all the lights are off, but somebody's usually in the kitchen, like most of the day, you know, most of the night after it gets dark. And then sometimes my wife or one of my kids will stay up late too. And we have a kitchen light on and then we have a night light so that, that everything's dark and there's a light there and all the moths get drawn to that one window and it's right beside where the bok choy was. So I've, I've actually got to empty them out and maybe move them and get them, get them away from there. Let's see. Things are going by really fast here. Da, 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 da. Who's also in here? Around 92 this week. Yeah, it is hot. It's it's brutal trying to do it out there. I put the bucket in the ground. Okay, that's another thing right there. Uh, some people are asking me about, you know, how do you keep it cool in the, in the containers? This is one thing. If you've got a bigger container, you can actually dig a hole and drop it down in the ground. And uh, that helps. Another thing you can do is take the container and actually shade it. And if your plant's sticking up here, you know, wherever the container is, you know, make sure you get shade on that. Even in the morning when your plant's getting a little bit of sun, make sure you shade that container. Uh, that's another thing that helps. So appreciate that, Doug. I mean, Louisiana, tomatoes, peppers, cracky method, way too hot out here. Killed one of my tomatoes. Yeah, that's a, it's, it's getting, it's getting brutal. It's getting, uh, I don't, like I said, this is May. I wasn't expecting it to be that hot this quick. And uh, I would have changed out a little sooner, but 
we've still got our collards and our kale that went, like made it all through the winter because we had a really warm winter. We only had two or three days of like frost, no freezes at all. And uh, all the stuff that we usually get rid of and then we start over, all the stuff you've seen in my last video is stuff that made it through the winter. So um, we're going to we're going to go ahead and try it. You know, it's a good time to experiment. If it gets hot and we get rid of everything and start over, that'd be pretty cool. You know, just even if we can't grow anything, uh, just to try. We have got I made a DWC system, if you, a deep water culture, uh, basically like the crafty system. I built a box, filled it, lined it and filled it up with water with nutrient solution. We put some plants in it and that's going wild. And I made a shade uh, house and we'll be doing a video on that coming up. But the shade house is keeping it cool and the stuff in there is going wild. I forgot about it and I uh, actually have some watermelon go growing in there. We were trying them just as uh, uh, an experiment. Somebody had asked and they've grown all over everything else and, and twisted around them. So we're going to get in there and try and untwist them and and see what we can do with it. But that that's doing really well. So I've got more videos coming out. Like I said, I've just been real busy with uh, some of this stuff. Oh, and the bad news. What do we got here? 34 entries. Awesome, guys. Good luck. 34. Let's see. Question for mile. Please use caps. Okay. Yeah, if y'all have questions, yeah, use all caps or something. There's the the chat like flies by and by the time I'm up here looking at y'all, sometimes I'll miss them. And I don't, you know, I don't mean that and I'm not skipping anyone. It's just I'm I I can't pay attention to it and and uh, keep up with you. Um, good luck, everyone. Oh, bad news. I forgot I started off. I said we have bad news. Let me get to this real quick. If you all are waiting for Dave Schramm, too, he was supposed to be on here and, and do a little interview with me. He's the pepper man and grows all things like he, he works during the day, but then he does a side business where he just grows all different varieties of peppers and then they dry them and blend them and he makes all his own blends. And I have a couple of them and he was supposed to be on tonight. But because of the rainy weather, like some of you up north, all that, those storms and that that have been going through, everything's been like mud and it kind of cleared up today and he's got a chance to go plant. He's got like 130 plants he needed to get in the ground and we might have more rain coming. So he asked me if I could put it off for a week or two. And, you know, that's more important. So I told him, you know, OK, so we'll get in here. We'll just have fun. Like it's a little Q&A, have the little giveaway and a. Uh, uh, I know we'll miss Dave and and some of you, I, I don't know how many of y'all know, know uh, Dave, uh, what is it, grown, grown at home in West Virginia. Um, if y'all know him, if not, I'll come back. I don't have his link down below, but we'll put that down there. But you'll get to know him in a, in a week or two. He's a real cool guy. Let's see. Hidden Harvest. Did my entry go in? Bushcrafting. I'll write you, I'll write your name down, Bushcrafting. And uh, I think I can go in there and, and check them out. I didn't know if this was the best way to do it, Brad, with the, um, let's see. Not sure, bushcrafting. Yeah, I'll, ch I'll check it out. I wrote your name down. Monsanto. I wasn't sure if this was the right way to do it, but uh, YouTube and all these platforms, they keep coming out with new rules. And one thing they came out with was that people were trying to buy like engagement and engagement can be anything from like asking for people to subscribe or to follow or to even comment. So if I say everybody go comment and I'm going to get a random comment picker and just pick you out for the giveaway that they could just uh, get rid of this video and, and uh, copyright strike it or whatever they do um, uh, or it violates terms of service because it's basically like I'm trying to buy engagement by giving something away to ask you to comment when you're not really doing that. You're just asking for the comment like a raffle ticket so that you can, you know, use it. But YouTube has the rules. So that's why I just use the the Gleam app right now. So y'all go over there and you kind of sign up and it doesn't have anything, you know, it doesn't matter if anybody engages here or not. So it's ju just just uh, to be safe on my part. So I don't mean to make it harder for y'all to go somewhere else to sign up for it. Okay, here's one. All caps. Mike, do you think baking soda is okay for pH up? Um, Doug, on a small scale, uh, I used to do it to baking soda and, and lemon juice, uh, pH up, pH down, if you don't feel like buying that stuff. But right now, all the stuff that I'm using and for the past 
six or eight years. I don't even mess with the pH. So I'm not really the person to ask. You see uh, CB in the chat. He's an awesome person to ask. I think that, uh, that, that, that Brad does that, checks and monitors his stuff, and probably George too. But there's a lot of people in the chat. Me, like I said, my channel was geared towards cheap and easy and trying to help as many people as we can. And when I first started trying out traditional hydroponics, it was like really expensive to get started. And I'd, I'd try something and a, a whole lot of stuff would be growing and then something would happen. Like I said, your pH would go out of whack or a pump would go down or your nutrients would be too low and all kinds of things would happen. And I was getting discouraged. And then somebody else was asking me, you know, saying that they couldn't afford all of that stuff. And if we could come up with a different way. So when I found Dr. Kratke and his system, I, I loved it. I started doing that. And when um, I was going on the road, then I tailor made it to fit me. So what I did was that's when I tried the downspout instead of just one container. And then I saw the deep water culture and I just kind of mixed stuff up so it fit for me. But I'd never once I started doing all that, I, d I don't mess with the pH at all. If you know, if, if it works, it works. Um, I don't the nutrients when the plants look like they need a little more, I add a little more. And, and if not, I add water, you know, it's kind of, I've been working with what I usually do is just grow fast growing greens where I can just put the nutrients in. They use them up, they grow really quick. And then let me see what my wife's saying here. How do I store leftover nutrients? Okay. Um, somebody else asked a question. So, so if that, if that answers your questions, Doug is, I don't really mess with that. I don't have any meters. I wanted this to be like something that my mom could do. And my mom's not going to go and order meters and check it. And one thing too, is that with, uh, all these small things, if you have, if you're doing like CB where you have everything set up on a drip and you have one big reservoir and you're coming and just checking a couple of tanks, is one thing, but I've got like 30 or 40 different containers sitting around, you know, these downspouts. So if I had to go in and keep checking each one, you know, I'd be there all day check, checking them out and checking the nutrients and putting a little pH up here, a little pH down there. I, I you know, it would take me too long. So I, I don't mess with it. Let's see. Will your lights work in the UK? I guess that's for you, Brad. Somebody's asking you a question there. And Keeley said, somebody asked, how do you store leftover nutrients? I mix five gallons at a time. Basically, the um, formula that we, we gave you where it's like 12 grams, 12 grams, and six grams, and we mix it up. And I use some of that. I do it in the five-gallon bucket, and I just cover it up and just keep that. Like, if you can keep it in a dark place or, you know, because algae will grow in there, I keep it closed up. You're going to, like during the summer now, you're going to use it really quick. So uh, I don't really have the time. I don't make more than five gallons at a time. If you're, if everything's all piped together, like CB's uh, greenhouse, then they make a, a big vat of it, a, a big container. Uh, so if, if you're storing it and if you're, you're just set up where you have a couple of downspouts or a couple of containers, make five gallons, just use what you need. And that that should be all right until you need it again. If you're asking about the the nutrients themselves after you mixed it up, let's see what it says. The leftover nutrients, or were you talking about like just the nutrients in dry form? Let's see. Good, thanks, Mike. Let's see. Nice setup on the peppers. Yeah, that's what y'all. If anybody knows, doesn't get over there to CB and check out his. Uh, set up there it's awesome i have to tell you dude i've saved so much money since the pool noodle recommendation caught pool noodles on clearance and got around 20 of them for eight bucks wow that comes out less that's less than a buck a piece i was paying a buck a piece and thinking wow i i they come out to about two cents um you you're getting them for like half that price less than half that price so you're, you're talking about a penny a piece cool deal that's a, they've been growing for a thousand years in dirt, probably work fine. Strawberries. I think y'all are talking amongst yourselves. Here we go. Hi, Mike. Can I safely put my apple tree plant in a cracky system with my lettuce? It's indoors. 
I don't know if anybody in the chat, any of you other gardeners know that you can basically with the cracky system, it's non-circulating. Uh, there's no aeration. You're going to want to just use something that's fast growing. I've, I've done some, like I grow shard that goes for like months and months and, and, and maybe a year, but really it's, you're going to end up having to like change them out and then you'll probably put too much or too little something like a tree or a bush people ask about bl uh, blueberry bushes and blackberry uh, uh, things like that really don't do well in the, in the system you want to do dry okay i'll go back to that you you just want to use the most you want to grow is mostly is fast grown leafy greens we can do some tomatoes i've been doing that the last couple of times is because people ask for it i usually don't do tomatoes because it uses the nutrients up too fast and i'm having to take care of it a lot more and like I said, maybe when I'm at home or some of you guys are at home all the time or, you know, you work and then you come home every day that that works out. But like me, I'm on the road and I'm, I'm too busy trying to trying to worry about them. Um, so it's mainly leafy greens, a little bit of peppers. And if it, I grow root vegetables for the greens, like I'll have beets and turnips and that going, but it'll be mainly for the greens. And you won't grow like a real nice looking beet, but but the beet greens are good in your juice all the time and you can always come back and harvest them off and they'll grow back um somebody whoever was asking about the um let's see a very big tub whoever was asking about the nutrients they said how do you store the nutrients and the dry one uh cb has a good video on like mixing up the nutrients and you can always talk to him i keep all three of them separate i think that one of the kits that they sell on amazon the master blend and the epsom salt comes mixed together and then the calcium nitrate is separate you always want to at the very least is worry about the calcium nitrate is keep that dry if you get any silica pa uh, packets toss them in a container with them uh, to absorb some of the moisture down here in florida we're really humid and if you leave it open it will absorb the moisture right out of the air and it'll turn into a rock it'll turn into a block that you won't be able to dissolve so one of our future videos we're going to talk a lot of people have been asking about nutrients and they notice that i don't mix mine up like master blend tells you how to do it and you know i've been doing it like that for six or eight years it, it's always best to go by the the manufacturer's directions and i'm doing it you know we're doing off-grid hydroponics isn't really you know it's doing things a different way so i do it a little different way if you've got the time and you want to mix them up the right way you always want to mix them separate the calcium nitrate and all your other stuff and then mix them together that's the best way i don't i don't do it because um but when i mix the dry ingredients together i immediately put them in the bucket and get the hose on them and mix them up i don't you don't want to mix them together and let them sit for half a day before you go out there and do it or, or try to pre-mix a lot of them and pack them up mix together because the calcium nitrate will suck the moisture out of the other nutrients the the master blend the air or anything and what happens is that that it just it, the chemical reaction happens and then it won't dissolve and there won't be no sense in putting it in and you won't have any nitrate uh, nitrogen going into your system uh let's see i store here goes somebody my dry nutrients in a ziploc bag under the sink yeah, a Ziploc bag. And like I said, if you can get little silica packets in that, um, you don't have to put them in with the calcium nitrate, but I have like a bigger container. I have them in a Ziploc bag and I put those into another container and I put silica packets in there um, so that that absorbs the moisture before it gets into the calcium nitrate. Uh, and that's mainly, you know, because I order like uh, 10 pounds or 12 pounds or 20 pounds at a time. And most of you probably won't be doing that hit that like button yeah hit that like button appreciate that happy lux appreciate you being in here let's see anybody let's see questions if if you have questions like they said put in capital letters and and i'll try to catch them but uh chat's going by like really quick right uh, those are great and it's hard to tell you know the difference between the both so uh one more thing when y'all are doing it if if everybody who's in here there's 57 people or maybe more i don't i don't know that's what i'm seeing here if you guys brad's giving away the the two grow lights um if you're going down into the description there's a little link 
uh, you don't have to do anything except just put your name and I think email because th then we can contact you and figure out how to mail it to you. But uh, just go over there and click that and, and get signed up. Be right back. All right, CB, we'll catch you later. Appreciate you being in here. Thanks, Mike. Awesome. Okay, James, you must have been the one that uh, asked the question. Doing some work. Some boat work. Oh, cool. Cool, Brad. 1927 Riverboat. You need to make a little video, put that up somewhere. Put it on Instagram. Put a picture of something on Instagram. That'd be pretty cool. And there's the giveaway. Like I said, if you all don't see it down there, just click the link. Grow lights, let me know when. Cool. All right. I was thinking of putting it in an ebb and flow system. Did it before. Okay, you guys are talking to each other. What nutrients do you use? John. John. John's from Hawaii, right? Aloha. I use Master Blend. Master Blend and the, the tomato formula, the 41838. Uh, you got to add calcium nitrate. It's 1500 and Epsom salt. Uh, I've used that for probably about eight years. And I've tried a couple of other ones. Uh, I went to the hydroponic shops when I first started and they had like the pre-mixed ones and, and uh, they were in different containers and you had to mix those separately because they'd coagulate. And they were like really expensive. They were about 30 bucks a bottle and you needed like two bottles. And, and when I was doing the DWC where you had like a huge um, container, I was going through the nutrients like really fast. So, when I found the master blend and I ordered a 25 pound bag, I think about six years ago. And I'm still on that 25 pound bag because you're using only 10 to 12 grams at a time. It lasts a while. Um, I'm just now about getting to the bottom of that. And I'm going to order some more, but that's what we use. And if you look on any of my other videos, John, I've got a link in, in the description of those to like an Amazon store where you can get like a small kit. It has all three of those. And if not, I ordered mine from uh, Morgan County Seeds. I don't know if any of y'all have used them. And that's where I got the 25 pound bag. And I think I ordered the calcium nitrate in that from them too. The Epsom salt, you just get right at the drugstore or I get mine at Lowe's. It's garden. I think somebody said they're like the same, but I always got it at the drugstore. And this time I went to the uh, Lowe's and picked mine up. Let's see. Anybody else? Thanks for the awesome channel. No questions for me. Appreciate it, James. Awesome. Bees, it's going too fast. Yes, yes, it is. St. George. Wow. Okay. Let's see. I'm down at the chat. So if anybody has any any questions, if not, um, let me see this. Does anybody want to pop on and say anything? Anybody want to talk in person? Have questions? That's a helicopter going over. Uh, don't mind that. And let me put invite. I'll pop up the little code here for one second. If anybody wants to pop on here and just say hello to everybody, here's a little to be on the show. Because this other thing I have, the Creator Spotlight Show, we get on there and... and uh, talk with each other. There we go. All you got to do is just click that link. I think it went through. Did anybody see it? <laughs> there we go. And uh, just allow your camera and your uh, mic and, and you can be on here uh, with me. If not, I'll just keep asking questions. Here we go. Let's see this one right here. Is bok choy your favorite? You have lots of videos. Yes. Uh, the reason why is because it was easy to grow. And the first year I grew it, I bought one packet of seeds and I grew some in the downspouts and I, I'll make a video about this, but this is so long ago. I didn't even have a camera I just, uh, uh, video. I, I just took a couple pictures and I didn't want to spend a lot of money making DWC. Um, so what I did was I dug a trench. And I just took plastic and threw it in it, filled it up with nutrients and I put styrofoam on it and I stuck some plants in it. So I had this long thing and it looked like a garden, except it had a layer of styrofoam and I stuck pak choy in it and I stuck lettuce and tomatoes and other things. But that pak choy grew and I let it go to seed 
and and it was pretty cool because all these bees and, and honeybees and bumblebees and everything were swarming around there. And I let it all go to seed and I collected it and saved it. And I've been using all of that seed for like the, all of these videos, all those videos you see, all that pak choy, all came from that one packet, which is pretty cool. So I know a lot of you save seeds, but that that worked out good. And um, I'm not sure how long they stay good, but I'm still using it. And I I'd saved some from last year. And the stuff's just great. I don't know if you guys buy it and use it in stir fries. I love it raw. I like to just get hot bowl of ramen and be able to go outside and cut some leaves off. You know, not harvest the whole plant. Just cut a couple leaves, rinse them, and just chop them up and throw it in the hot broth. And it just wilts. And the white part stays crunchy. And the little green part wilts kind of like spinach. Uh, not a real strong flavor. Uh, so I, I love it. And you can make uh, kimchi with it. You can stir, toss in your stir fries. It's real versatile. Been using General Hydro and switched to Master Blend. How do I transition my plants to different nutrient? Um, I don't know that. It's, you're just going to have to, you know, just try. I, I want to try it like on all of them at once. You might have, want pick one or two and try to transition them. Wait till, you know, your nutrients get a little low and and give it uh switch it over but i'm not sure i've never switched in the middle of grow i've always waited until i was completely done and i started another one um so sorry about that crystal i'm not really sure what uh, what to do with that let's say to be on the show i use milk jugs for my cracky safe for plants paint them white is it safe if i paint them white yeah I mean, if you don't, you know, you can use, you can just use, if you're not worried about it, you can uh, prime it. You can use latex if you need to. Uh, usually the plants aren't going to be all over the container. If you're worried about it, you know, wrap it in aluminum foil. You know, there's different things, things you can do. Um, but I don't, I don't see any problem with it. Let's see, sent link, sent link. All right. Is everybody signed up for that? down in the description down there good luck hidden harvest grow lights so that's another question for you brad mike van Duzzi. i said to use milk jugs for great yes i just answered that right okay there's the that's the formula that we use um for most almost everything if you're growing just lettuce like leafy greens, you can cut it down to 10, 10, and 5. Um, but since I'm growing tomatoes too, and instead of having different things mixed up, I just use that formula right there. Uh, works pretty good for everything. Uh, CB right here has a good, um, let's see, I don't have any cracky going right now, but I do have three DWC in a pepper house. Yeah, but he uses Master Blend and it mixes up like the same way, and he's got a couple of good videos on how to mix it up and a mix uh, a bigger portion up too. So go on over and check out his channel. And I'm sure you can click around there somewhere and find the one for the nutrients. I know I've got like a bunch of videos, so it's kind of hard to find them. And people are always asking for different ones and I'm having to go back and link it up. Uh, I'm gonna have to organize my channel a little bit better. Let's say you grow like giveaway. George, are you a... Uh, Mod, I think I made some of you mod. I think CB and I think I did Brad too. All right. Am I missing anybody? Thank you to everyone. Super excited. All right. Yeah. So everybody, if you haven't already met Brad or seen his channel, you need to get over there and see what he's doing with the grow lights. They're just, it's really, really interesting. Like I said, it's um, somebody he's designed them and he's actually tested them. And it's, you know, this isn't like a, a fluke thing you see and, and he's got his channel and you can see what he's growing. So if you haven't been over there, go check him out. Let's see, George McClure. Just posted a video on mixing the pepper house. Okay, you did that today? Cool. I'll check that out. Everybody else can check that out too. CB's right there. Bok choy is great as a wrapper for Ray. Oh yeah, that's another thing we do. I didn't think about is they want the leaves just to do you can put a little your rice and kimchi and uh what's that bulgogi korean style use it like a little wrapper kind of like a little tiny taco wrapper or something and you put your rice and stuff in if you don't feel like getting seaweed and rolling up 
uh, sushi and that too. This is a neat other way to just have your rice and just make it one bite at a time. Yeah, pak choy is awesome. It is my favorite. Uh, one more thing, guys. Since y'all over there already signing up for that, I don't know if any of you know who Gary Vaynerchuk is, but the reason why I started my channel and I'm starting the other Creator Spotlight channel and helping my wife start hers and doing all this stuff, making videos, is because of Gary Vaynerchuk and him just being a huge inspiration. And he started a line of uh, wine. And that's like how he started out was Wine Library. And if y'all don't know him, you know, uh, I'm sure you can find him on the internet and, and anywhere. He's got like 2 million followers or something. But this wine, if anybody just to show appreciation for him, down in the description when y'all went and signed up for the grow light i'm giving away a three pack of this the um it's a uh, like a 40 dollars wine for 20 bucks and i'm gonna give away a three pack this is the rose just came out and it's awesome i don't know how many of you in the chat y'all like wine any wine drinkers out there but that's just wherever they deliver and mostly i think it's it's uh usa and canada so one day I'm going to try and figure out something for everybody around the world because we've got people from Australia and Germany and Switzerland and Netherlands and uh, Trinidad and South America. So we're going to have to figure out something for all of them too. But um, let's see, somebody asked a question. Yeah. So y'all go down there when you sign up for the grow lights, head on over there. You can, if, if you know Gary Vaynerchuk and he's affected your life any, if you're like an entrepreneur, um, go ahead and just write down a sentence or two and tell me how he's, uh, affected your life or your business or anything like that. And if you don't know him, just put don't know. I, I want to know that too. Is out of all the people I know, you know how many people actually know this man? So, and if you don't, you need to get to know him. So, two things you can win a grow light and three pack of wine. So, pretty cool. Awesome night. Let me see. Keely said somebody else asked a question. Give me a second here. Michelle asked, Do you change your bucket nutrients when it gets low? Uh, 90% of the time, no, not at all. I try to keep, like I said, if you can keep the light out, if you can keep it dark, you're not going to get any, uh, algae growing. And really all of the stuff you've seen, like if you look at my last video, all the stuff growing around everywhere, there's no algae anywhere. And back in my other place, I did have a little, when I first started, I had trouble with algae and had a lot of sun coming in. And sometimes I would leave a couple of like the hole is not completely covered up. Uh, there's different things you can do. You know, you need you need to at least keep keep sunlight from getting in there and you'll keep the algae down and then you really don't have to do anything if you're growing fast growing greens. Now, if you're going to grow something like like chard and, and grow for like six months, you're going to have to adjust it uh, and either kind of like me where I just do it by feel. And if you can't do that, you might have to get meters and do like everyone else and then test it and, and change it. Uh, but if, if I usually grow 90% of the time is, is fast growing greens. By the time the greens get to harvest, I change out the entire bucket. I toss it like in Keeley has a little traditional garden and I just start over. Um, I don't usually keep anything where, where it's going to warrant me switching the whole thing out. See these things, the, your plants with the roots and everything, they get used to, you know, your water doesn't like drop like really fast. And it gets used to being at a certain level and growing roots to absorb air, oxygen and absorb nutrients out of the water and absorb the water itself. And when your water gets like low, um, when when you switch stuff out on them and, and it gets used to that environment and you totally change, it puts them back in shock again. It's kind of like taking a plant. Some people asked about taking them out of your hydroponics and sticking them in the ground. They're just going to go into shock. Um, same Same thing happens with that. Alrighty, where are we at? 62 entries. Cool deal. Awesome people. And out of all those people who are entered, everybody knows CB or we got new people in here too. Proof is in my videos. Yes, they are. Let's see. Enter grill light. So there's the, if you see right there in the comments, you just click that, go enter. So y'all, like I said, the, the wine is going to be till Sunday. And then the grow light, we're going to run that for one week. And I'll keep uh, trying to get people heading over to Brad's place over there. Um, if I don't make another video. 
CB has good videos checking nutrient levels with a cheap meter. Yeah, yeah, he does. And and all of that stuff's not not really expensive. They they you know since we got Amazon, you can do it. You know it's and if you've got the time and you want to do it, you know there's always a better way. Like I said, everything that I'm doing is not the best way, and I've never claimed it is. It's just the easiest for me, and I want to share that with other people so that they you know can if they've had trouble doing it that they don't get discouraged by all of the the stuff that you need to know. But once you get the basics down, you can always level up. You can always check your pH. And if you want to adjust it and you can always check your nutrient level and adjust it. Um, you can, you know, add pumps, add aeration. There's all kinds of stuff you can do. So we're just a starting point. Hector, how are you doing? I see you around in all the, the videos and everything in my live streams. Really appreciate you, bud. Did you, uh, um you sign up for the grow light when your nutrients get low do you add more nutrients or just water add more nutrients i just keep keep on the same thing like i said keep it between half and three quarters if you let it get down below half um the downspout can tip over the roots uh the water can heat up really fast and that's bad for it uh you want to keep it about half to three quarter full so when it gets down about half i just fill it back up you know and then if I'm gone for like a week or something, uh, I try not to do it, but let it get too low. But I just fill a little and I just put just the same nutrient solution back in. Um, if they look like they're getting leaf burn or the tips are getting burned a little, sometimes I just add a little water, especially during the heat of the summer. Because right now, a lot of that water is evaporating. Your, your plants aren't using it all. Um, during the winter and the fall, the, the plants were mainly using it and the, there wasn't that much evaporation right now. The, the, there's a lot of evaporation. So your, your nutrients can get concentrated. So you might want to just use a little water once in a while. Uh, no science to what I'm doing. <laughs> Sorry. Do you use hydrogen peroxide and water for cleaning? Uh, no, I don't, Doug. You can, lots of people do. Um, I use a little bit of bleach if there's any, uh, algae i just fill it up put a cap full or half a cap full and um let it sit for a little while or i put vinegar sometimes because some of the nutrients after you use them uh they can form a little bit of a, a crusty thing like the salts and that in it and once in a while i'll put a little bit of vinegar with the water and let that sit um you can use hydrogen peroxide i know there's lots of people that do that and it works really well i might even try it too Oh, hi. I used to get sick when I had to do something in front of people when I lowered my standards and just hoped that I wouldn't vomit. Everything got easier. Me too, Janine. There was, I couldn't, and my wife was on her first interview. If you guys weren't uh, like watching like some of my content and stuff, I uh, um, put a little link yesterday and me and my wife were on an interview and she's really shy and she got out in front of everybody and, and it was pretty cool. I'm really proud of her bleach and I don't get along that for sure. I do not get along with that for sure. Oh, somebody else showed up. Pepe, how are you doing? See everybody in the chat. Pepe, if you want to grab a link and jump in here and talk with everyone, you, you're you're free to. I told it. anybody, anybody that wants to jump in here. Let's see. It's Dream Yards. There's a link in the comments. And we can just pop you on here and, and say hey to everybody. But appreciate you, uh, all the support and everything. Uh, everybody that's in the chat too, Pepe's another one of our friends. You see CB and, and George and Hydroponics. Um, let's see who else is in here. Here we go. And Hidden Harvest, Brad and uh, Marty. If you all see Marty around from Marty's Garden, you know, we're all a... Uh, bunch of just friendly gardeners in that and if you all haven't seen pepe's channel go check him out pepe brad's giving away two of his grow lights to two of the viewers in here tonight but we're going to run it for a little while and uh, see how many people we can enter he said 65 entries i found mike through pepe oh cool appreciate it it's like a small world we all it, it, we, we've got so many connections and and it's so much fun I, I it's hard for me to remember who I met where and 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 whatever but it, it there's so many uh just cool people to get along with and uh, bounce ideas off of each other and and uh just connect with each other it's pretty cool 
Thanks for all you do to educate. I appreciate that, Gloria. Let me see another question. If no skill, use grams of measuring cup for master blend. If I don't have a scale, uh, really, I think that I'm not sure, and I don't want don't take this for gospel. I heard some people use like a tablespoon, like of your master blend calcium nitrate. See, different people get nit uh, calcium nitrate from different places, and it's different density. Uh, so, like a, a tablespoon from one place might not be the same grams as another tablespoon. But if you you really don't want to get a digital scale and you just want to guess at it, like about a tablespoon of each, I think. And if any of you guys in the chat know the answer, let me know. Um, and about half a tablespoon of the the Epsom salt. What's Pepsi? Say? I have about half an hour. Got fried or okay, no problem. Yeah, I forgot this isn't a weekend stream. I thought Dave Schramm was going to be on here, but but he had gardening to do, so we had a uh, live stream. Um, hooked up and, and, and then he told me he couldn't be here. So, uh, we'll, we'll catch you later, Pepe, if you can't get in, we know we all got work in that to do. I can't win lights in Canada. Uh, sorry. Um, like I said, we're going to come up with something else. We'll, we'll figure something else out for uh, a giveaway for people uh, around the world. And that could use some grow lights for my herbs and other small veggies. Yes. Good luck to everyone that, that would be really cool. And and anybody that wins this bike makes so simple. Appreciate that. Appreciate that, uh, CB. Uh, if, if anybody does any growing and everything and they do use like these lights, you know, make sure you take pictures and tag us or post them somewhere. Or if you make videos too, or you have a channel, make sure you let us know. I've been getting like a lot of uh, uh, pictures in um, – Hope mine went through. I'll check Donna. What are you, Donna, 1961? Um, people have been sending pictures to keep on growing one at gmail.com. And uh, let me write that down. And in our Facebook group, keep on growing. And they've been posting pictures. And it's just, just fun because not all of them do things exactly the way that I do. But... Um, it's cool to see just like when I saw Dr. Cracky doing one th things one way and I switched it up to, to fix fit the way that uh, suits my purposes. People are taking it and doing it different ways too. And, and they're sending me pictures of different things that they're doing. And that's pretty cool. Maybe I'll do a video like that one night where I just, you know, get everybody's pictures and, and post those and show you what everybody else is doing. Who got you started in hydro? Um, no, really, it's I was trying to traditional garden. I always wanted to grow my own food. And we moved, my wife and I moved out. We were on like this 300 acre uh, ranch and we moved on a, a little spot on it. And there was all this land and I wanted to grow it. And then we got out there like, you know, like a lot of us, you start, you go and get the tiller and you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this and till up the land. And we we're going back into the forest and getting this real rich dirt by the wheelbarrow full and, and bringing it up and getting everything ready and cut down trees and logs and made a log fence and planted a garden and it's all growing and going good. And you're excited. And then I go on the road and like I said, your irrigation goes off or, or the deer decide to come by or the cattle or something and everything's like gone. And this would happen over and over and over again. And I was trying to figure out something that could keep going while I was gone. And I tried traditional hydro. I just looked it up because I've always heard of like hydroponics, aquaponics and everything. And, and I, I looked at all the different ways to do it and tried to find some way I could try where I was at. And it ended up being a small system with one little pump, kind of like the NFT system that I have now. And it worked well. And but like I said, once again, I had everything in there, all kinds of stuff growing. And I was gone for a week and, and had a lightning storm and tripped the breaker and the pump went out. And then we went back up to 100 degrees and everything's dead when I got home. So after years and years of being discouraged, I went on over and uh, found Dr. Kratkin. I was like, wow, there's no pumps, no aeration. He's growing out. You know, I know Hawaii's kind of tropical. Florida's kind of tropical. And I just, I got into that. Hey, Stacy Morgan, how are you doing? Appreciate you being here, bud. Um, Stacy, you do any kind of growing or gardening? We've got a little contest with grow lights, Brad has two grow lights that he's given away and it's down in the description. And if you haven't signed up for the wine too, there's a little thing down there. 
Um, when is it too hot in Florida for greens? I grow greens all year round. Uh, they're not going to be optimal, but I use it to eat. And that's what some people got to realize too, is that, you know, if you just want to be like a hobby or you want to do things, you know, 90% correct and just do it the right way, then you wait for the different seasons, uh, spring and fall and get out there and get your stuff growing, harvest and it's over. I want greens out there all the time. So that's why my videos, you see them going all the time. Uh, I try not to harvest everything. And I'll like, if my NFT system needs to be broke down and cleaned, I'll harvest that, but I'll still have a bunch of downspouts everywhere. And then when I need to clean out the downspouts, I'll have my NFT system going. That way I don't like totally run out of everything at one time and things won't grow. I, I built a shade house to kind of cut down on the heat. Um, they'll get a little leggy. They'll wilt during, you know, hundred degree weather. Uh, if you're home, you can get out there and, and, and spray them down a little or, or mist them and do, do different things. It's just, it's just a, a battle. But if you want the food, uh, you know, if you, you don't want to do it, you just go to the store and buy your greens. That's fine. But to me, if whatever work I can put into it, that when I decide to go eat or make a smoothie or do whatever, and I can walk out the back door and pick a couple, that's like rewarding to me. So even though it's not optimal during the heat, I still got collards and kale and you saw my last video and I, my next video, I'll still have it in there sooner or later. That stuff's got to be harvested because it's getting so big. I know the roots, there's a four inch pipe on it. NFT system The there's tomatoes all over it. I pulled most of the tomatoes off. There's a couple left. I'm trying to wait for those to get red. If not, my wife's going to make fried green tomatoes, but those are getting big. They're going to clog up that NFT system like really quick. So, I've been trying to trim the roots, but they're, they're just growing really, really fast. Make, you know, that might be, you know, the stuff in the the traditional garden is having a really tough time and, and it's too hot. But in, in the hydroponics, is, it seems to be doing, you know, not as good as spring or fall, but it's we, we still got stuff growing out there. I probably missed 100 questions here, guys. I'm really sorry, but are you planning on writing another ebook in the future? Um, no. Uh, yes and no, but uh, I don't know if you knew this, Doug, if you've seen any of my videos before. What I had done with everyone that's out here is I, I made one one ebook, and it's basically like if you want to help support the channel, I really appreciate it. You know, it's five bucks. Um, you get the ebook, and, and any future updates I got, if I do anything, if I go back and write another chapter, I've already done one. I might do one a year. I'm just going to go back through my email and give it to everybody free. So you're not having to keep going over and over and over. It's not, I don't want to seem like, you know, here's a free ebook, but you know, that leads to a $199 course that you have to take, or it leads to, you know, a funnel to something else. I just give you that ebook and then I just keep adding on to it. And, and I don't expect anything else. You know, if you want to, you know, like somebody did a super chat, if they want to support, they can do that way. But, but I don't, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to be an author and spend a whole lot of time doing that. Um, so I'm basically giving away my information, you know, free. It's, it's just a, like a little, instead of asking for tips, if you've been a lot of live streams, you see people asking for a tip or putting a tip jar. Um, I feel better that this way, instead of a tip, you at least get the ebook in return. So I'm, I'm not in the business of, of trying to, trying to sell a bunch of ebooks. So, uh, if I have any updates, I just add it to it and I just go back through my uh, email list and, and just send it to everybody. So if you got any questions or anything you want to see in it, just let me know in my next one. I'll, I'll be sure to put it in there. Let's see. Yes, sir. Entered for the lights. Cool. Sorry, you can't drink the wine. That's all right. That's cool. You know, if you want to enter for the wine, if you know Gary V and, and you like him, if you just want to enter, you can just give me an address of somebody else that's over 21. And I'll just drop ship it there. You know, that'd be a nice gift for somebody that's um, almost 90 bucks. You know, it's 20, 27, 27, 27, 84. I think it's free shipping. It's about a $90 prize. So, you know, if you want to give it away as a gift, you know, that that's all on you. You know, if you guys um, win it. I grow red Malabar spinach in Florida for greens. Cool. Now I tried Malabar spinach. And it, and it grows good. My wife grew it and we did like a rain gutter grow system. I don't know if you guys have heard about that. Uh, Larry Hall, who's on Facebook. And basically he's got like these containers and it's got a little net cup and, a, and a, like a gutter. 
and he keeps that gutter full of water and it, it wicks up and we put the Malabar spinach in there and it went wild. It went, we had a greenhouse and it grew up to the ceiling and was growing all over the place. Um, now I stuck it in my hydroponic system a couple of years back and it seemed like it soaked up a lot of water. It was like, and if you guys don't know the Malabar spinach, the, the leaves are a little, uh, like mucusy or something kind of like okra. And then w when it was on there, it got like really, really like snotty or something. Mine did. And so I didn't try it in the hydroponics. Uh, I might try it again. Who else has had Malabar spinach? I know that it grows well in the heat because regular spinach doesn't. Um, next, I'm going to try uh, Egyptian spinach. I think Marty told me. Smoothie recipes and spring roll recipes. Yep. We'll get to that. We've got we've got people that uh, um, ask for the, the smoothie and our recipes all the time. Tell them the same thing, Mike. I gave a call two years ago. Yeah, I don't I don't drink that much. And to tell you the truth, that's the only that one bottle when I got the first um, thing and mainly I bought it as like support for him. Um, that was the first thing I drank like in two years. Um, so uh, don't feel bad if y'all don't. Um, I don't I don't drink much either. But I thought that some people that are out there, I don't judge anybody and people that do, you know, I thought that it'd be a nice gift. All righty. Anybody else love fried green tomatoes? Me too. And where have we been going? All right. That's one hour. Wow. One hour goes by really fast. Does anybody else, did I miss any questions? We don't miss the peacocks. Yeah, that was we, when we lived on the, the ranch, the people that owned it, we were working as farmhands. They had a flock of uh, peacocks and you see them at first and they're like beautiful and, and they're like squawking and, and flying up in the trees. Next thing they come through your garden and like decimate it and then they get up on your porch and poop everywhere. And you're like, oh, my God, what the hell's going on? So I don't don't miss, miss them at all. Let's see if I missed anybody. Sorry, uh, I use this software because like the creator spotlight thing that I'm doing, I bring other guests on. If anybody gets in the waiting room, I can pop them on the screen here with me. And I just I get on here, too, since I'm paying for the software. And uh, the one thing is that I don't see like the chat, uh, the chats on the side, but uh, it works a little different. Let me see if anybody else is in here. What's going on? Not too long. Two days top. Turn and burn. Saying hello. Love the rain gutter setup. Our system is very productive for leafy greens. Cool. Yeah, that's a, that's that's what what I use it for. And, and uh, you know, guys, it's just awesome to to go out if you like. You get to make a smoothie in the morning. When my uh, wife first started, um, like making smoothies, we'd go up to the store and we'd buy uh, all of our like carrots and ginger and things like that. But then all our leafy greens, we're buying a bunch of spinach and um, kale and, and uh, broccoli and different things. But we, sometimes we buy too much or it gets shoved in the refrigerator and, and half of it would end up in the compost pile. And it's just cool to go uh, dig up a little ginger, grab some mint, go over, grab your collard, kale, you know, whatever you want to put in it. Just walk out there and grab a couple, fill up your little basket and go inside and blend it up. And instead of like pulling out like a big thing of, of leafy greens, you know, pulling out all your stuff out of the refrigerator, prepping it and, and putting it all up. You just go out and just get a couple leaves that you need. You know, it's just really, really cool. Mike, do you ever grow cracky without nutrients? Uh, no, I don't. There was uh, some people there. There's a couple things, you know, people will do like a little basil. You can root that. It'll grow a little bit. Um, green onions. Th there's a couple of things, but the, the plants need the nutrients. Uh, they make their their food from the sun is photosynthesis, but the nutrients are kind of like, I think um, if Marty was here, Marty's actually, uh, I think a botanist or something, or he went to school for it. Um, the, the, you can think of the nutrients as like vitamins for us, you know, with the, we have our food that we eat and the plants make their own food through photosynthesis, but the nutrients are kind of like the vitamins for the plant. It's the things that it needs to be healthy so that it, it can photosynthesize and it can absorb water and nutrients and aspirate and just all the other things that um, without the nutrients, it'd be like you living without any vitamins or minerals. 
Da, 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 da. I have Malabar going in my grow room. Awesome. It took over my lights and chains. It's like Ivy. Pretty. Don't like the taste, but it's nicer. Yeah, it is a nice runner plant. And it's, uh, yeah, the, like I said, it's, it's a little, little slimy. And it does have a stronger flavor than uh, some of the other stuff. But it, it has these pretty purple, like little flowers and berries. And you can actually use it like dye. It was nice seeing Michael Jr.'s channel the other night. Awesome. Oh, yeah. Tech for your needs. Appreciate that. I saw you over there. Um, really appreciate that. Like I said, if anybody hasn't, you can come back later. I'll put a link down there. If you kind of want to know my backstory, most people probably don't. But on my channel, I usually do. You know, it's just all hydroponics and you see me doing a little wacky stuff once in a while. But I don't ever sit and talk about myself because, um, you know, people are coming there to learn about hydroponics. But I was on a show with my wife um and they asked about our backstory and, and it was called my youtube journey and, and how all of this came to be and that was really really fun and, and tech for your needs there was over there i had a i had a blast with that so if y'all can check that out i'll, I'll link it down below it, it was fun it's, you know nothing about hydroponics per se and that is just our, our backstory christopher alvarez asked what do you use to fight off leaf miners i don't know somebody help me out with that the, I grow more than I need. And what I found was that like with the pak choy, if I grew beans and this was a fluke, I have a video about that. It was a fluke that I grew beans one time as an experiment because some people kept asking me um, to grow beans and I grew some and I noticed that a bunch of leaf miners like attacked it, but it still grew the beans. And, but when they were on there, they didn't bother my pak choy as much. So sometimes I grow beans as a sacrificial plant and i'll plant those all around and a lot of time the leaf miners that little fly or whatever that flies around will be drawn to those beans and i'll i won't plant them thinking that i'm i'm going to harvest a lot of beans but i'll plant them around as sacrificial plants um that's that's just one thing that one thing that i do yes leaf miners let me see my wife my wife texts me uh she's in a different room so if y'all wonder why you know, I keep looking down as soon as she tries to keep me uh, caught up. Christopher asks, what you use to fight leaf miners? Okay, that's what we we're just asking. Leaf cutter, solitary bees. Okay. Solitary bees. Why is my cilantro tasting soapy? Any guess? Yes, it's meant to be that way. I don't know why, but there's a lot of people, it tastes like soap. And I've heard that. And there's this big, wherever I go, where there's like cooking or people talking about recipes and somebody says cilantro, a bunch of people jump on there and go, ew, I hate it. It tastes like soap. So I guess to some people, I love it. There's a real distinct flavor. And I think if you, you taste it and you associate it with that, that it'll always be stuck in your brain like that. So I've heard that from a lot of people. So nothing wrong with your cilantro. That's basically um some people do and some people don't it's like uh pine nuts real good high quality pine nuts uh are good but some people the cheaper ones a lot of people can taste like metal or tin when they when they eat it we squish them oh that's what my wife said too is what you go around if you see little leaf miners in there too where their little trail you walk through there in the morning and just if you you're not afraid to squish them just they're they're in there eating the leaf and you just kind of squash them and that kind of stops them where they're at but you have to watch out your plant and try to get them out of there but they they can be a bother but if i had my choice between a couple of leaf miners and white flies i, I take the leaf miners because uh, the white flies are like really really uh bad too sometimes genetics you guys talking amongst yourselves the world is split in half those who love cilantro and those who just think it tastes like soap yeah, it's just, like I said, the pe people are just like that. It tastes like soap if you have cilantro soap <laughs> tasting jeans. All right, let me see. Am I way behind in the in the chat? Really appreciate you guys. Keely needs to be in the live stream with you. Yeah, she does, uh, George, but um, she had an allergic reaction and almost had to go up to the hospital again. And a couple weeks ago, she was in the hospital. And she's getting over all that. Uh, she was up at night. We got up actually this morning, bright and early, 
got on the road, went to work, drove a couple hours. We went to work and we worked all day and we drove home and then I jumped on the stream here. So we, we've been going since like five or six this morning and she's had that allergic reaction thing going on. So she just wasn't up to it. So I didn't, I didn't bother asking her. Let's see that you might buy your lamp. Is it us money? I think so. She's asking you something there, Brad. If it starts to bolt, it tastes awful. Awful. Yes, yeah, cilantro loves to bolt. Pepe, twenty dollars from Pepe Fossils to pay for the wine posters that bring gutter grow system. Oh, cool, Pepe. Was that a super chat? Like I said, I'm not in the YouTube thingy. Appreciate that, bud. Really do. And I don't expect that out of anybody, but I really do appreciate that. And if everybody has checked out, let me see if I can get Pepe's thing on here. Y'all bear with me for one second. YouTube. So all of you in here signed up for the grow light already. How many of you know, let's see, CB, hydroponic gardening, and Pepe and George and of course Brad who's giving away the green light uh, grow lights but uh, if all these guys I mean if you guys haven't seen our channels um, pop into any one of them you can learn a lot of stuff and like I said I do the off-grid hydroponics but there there's so much more that you can do too and check out Pepe's channel because he's actually running a business I'm doing this to grow food to eat um, the grow lights, Brad's starting a business doing that and he's opening that up. Pepe is running an actual farm microgreens and he's taking them to grocery stores and to the farmer's market on the weekends and to uh, chefs at restaurants. And, and he's got his Instagram pages, uh, 560 farms. And he's got some real fantastic looking stuff on there. And he, he's um, got some high end chefs in Australia are starting to use his product. And they build these fantastic looking dishes and he's got a couple of pictures of those, but you need to check out his Instagram page and um, his YouTube. If you go back to the interview that we had, I think I've got the live, live stream up. It's got all of his, uh, it's got his YouTube channel in there and you can click over there and find him. Let me see. $10. $10 from Bushcraft and in 10. Awesome. Appreciate that. Bushcraft and in 10. Like I said, I can't see the super chats here. I'm trying to get on YouTube and I'm going to come back and thank all of you guys later. I'm going to go through and make sure that I check them all out. Let's see. Because I'm afraid if I try to do too much on my little crappy computer that I'm going to crash and not see what you guys are doing let me get that up there really appreciate that anybody gives a super chat or oops one second here see i gotta mute that there we go there we go okay now i see to pay for the wine and post yeah appreciate that pepe and bush crafting i really do you guys are awesome and Bushcraft, I got to check out your channel on that too. All righty. So everybody, there's Pepe. Oh, there it is, 560 Farms. That's the right there. You'll see that on Instagram. Go check that out. That That's a cool page. Mine, I just post a couple of things that I'm growing and, and pictures of my chihuahuas and stuff like that. But if you want to see some cool microgreens in that, go check that out. Hidden Harvest Grow Lights. Interesting. Cool. All right. Anybody got any, anything interesting? What are y'all growing? You doing anything different? Is everybody going through the same thing with like the heat and that, that we are, you know, I'm in Florida. I know it's just cooling off. You guys have been waiting up north to just start growing. So some of you have just started. Some of you started a few weeks ago. And like us, I'm real disappointed that it heated up this fast because we, we still got the whole summer. Summer doesn't even start till a couple of weeks into June. So we're still in spring. We're hitting 100 degrees. So uh, it's going to be a rough one, but we like a challenge, right? 
there's a guy I found through your channel that was doing all kinds of experiments with lettuce and he stopped doing videos for a couple of years. Uh, I think you're talking about it's M M H P or M P H Gardner. He's actually the one that I found uh, the, the master blend and the, and how to mix up his, his recipe. I actually found it and, and he hasn't, yeah, he's been gone for like years. His channel's still up and it's getting views, uh, but he hasn't posted any new video. So I, I don't know where he's went. Oh, there you go. My wife is on the ball. There's Pepe's channel right there. Y'all can go check that out. Cayman Islands growing orchids. Awesome. My mom, uh, when she was alive in that, she just loved orchids. Have everything to start cracky, but no lights yet. Are you, so you're up in Canada, I think you said, or whatever, it's still like really cold. Thanks, Mike, for all you do for us, buddy. Brad, thanks so much, giving us the grow lights away. I got to hit the sack. Okay, CB, no problem. Appreciate it. Thanks for all you do. And, and you guys check out. I learned a lot from CB and Renee, his wife. You can see them both. Let's see right there. They're real fun. You go check out their stream. Uh, and he's got two greenhouses set up right now. Real fantastic. And they're growing um, stuff on straw bales. Uh, they're really cool. Y'all go check their channel out. I learned a heap of stuff from him. Let's see, Mike, is it best to keep like plants in one cracky system and not to mix? I am so new to this. I have to put lettuce, bok choy, basil. Yeah, it's real tempting. Uh, it's, it's best to keep mostly the same stuff in one. And that's why I like the downspouts and I grow like smaller ones, uh, ones that hold like about 10 different spots and I'll grow sometimes try to mix some things up if they're all like leafy greens, but you're going to find out like when you see my NFT system, I was doing that because people were asking me about tomatoes, but usually you don't want to put tomatoes in with all your other things. Everything uses nutrients and water at different speeds and something like your tomatoes will suck up a whole lot of the nutrients, especially the nitrogen and it'll grow a bunch of leaves. You have to keep cutting them while it's trying to set the fruit and it, it'll actually suck up a lot of the nutrients that you need and your other leafy greens will, will suffer because of it. And I think you can kind of see that in, in my NFT system if you look back. So you kind of want to keep everything the same in one system. So hot here in Atlanta. It is hot, hot, hot. 40s and 50s at night. That's awesome. I wish it was 50 at night up here. That just sounds so good. About to have me a ham and cheese sandwich with lettuce and tomatoes from my garden. Awesome. That's what it's all about, right? Uh, it's like I said, I just can't explain what it's like to just walk out and just grab, grab stuff out of your garden and not, you know, not grab a lot uh, like you do at the grocery store. We used to live so far out and we'd overbuy stuff because we'd be so worried about not getting back out to the store and we'd waste stuff and go in the compost and to go out and just pick up a couple of things from your garden and leave the rest of it growing. Um, that's why also if some of you, some people have asked, you know, why I don't grow more or, you know, my garden, you know, why it's kind of small and I got a little variety is I don't like to overproduce. I'll produce more. So in case like the bugs will eat it or, or something will die and I keep them in separate containers, but I don't like to overproduce. So we grow about what, you know, my wife and my, I are going to eat. And then if anybody wants some, you know, we tried growing a lot one time and, and giving it out to people. And believe it or not, a lot of people didn't want greens and that they, you know, I think if I had hamburgers or something to give out, they'd, they'd take it or bacon, but nobody wanted the greens. So everybody go ahead and if, uh, if you haven't already, go down in the description, sign up for the grow lights. I think Brad said there's over 60 people. So I've got that running. If that's all right with you, Brad, I was going to run it for about uh, a week, if that's fine with you, and try to get some more people signed up for it. And then uh, we'll go ahead and have the drawing. Maybe next week I'll do another live stream. This is Thursday. So maybe next Friday because we'll, we'll wait and give everybody the whole week to get signed up. And then next Friday we'll do a little uh, uh, show and, and tell everybody who won that. And this is for another four days. So I'll do that uh, on the creator spotlight show, but I'll let everybody know. I'll put a little link in my uh, discussion. Got to try bok choy. Art is fun. I just had made mojitos. 
yeah, we got so much mint, we got to cut it down. Mint in these systems just goes wild. It's like a weed. Okay, let's see. I know I'm probably way behind. CB is willing to share info. Yeah, CB is awesome. Hell no, sick of the cold. Yeah, you guys have had a rough winter. And that's what I feel. This is my fault down here because I was making fun when you guys were having all that snow and I was going, oh, it's nice down here. It's 80 degrees or something. And now it's like friggin' 100. It's not, not any fun. Let me get through the chat here really quick. See if anybody's got any more questions. My wife is texting me. And like I said, if I missed any of y'all, I'm sorry. It's just that this, this is going by like really, really fast. And two new messages. Can't find bushcraft in it. All right. We'll go look for it. I don't know what you mean, Keely. You said you can't find bushcraft in TS. Any ideas what's best to do with strawberry runners? She wants to plant them. Um, I don't know. This is my first year growing strawberries. Some Somebody asked me to try it. I, I know that they grow well, like in a, a drip system in hydroponics. They, they do fantastic. But as far as cracky, I don't know how well they do keeping the roots wet all the time. And like you said, and, and cutting runners and trying to root the runners. And another thing is overwintering them too. But right now I have about three or four plants going and the squirrels, I've been battling them. They come down. I have one downspout that has amaranth. And I don't know if they're trying to get to the water or what, but every morning I go out there and they, they pull the first one out and mess with a couple of other plants, but they always pop that first one out. And I don't know if they're trying to get to the water or nutrients and I keep putting it back in and they eat all my strawberries. I got a, about a handful of strawberries off of um, about a week or two ago. And then the squirrels have found them and, and they don't even get a chance to barely get ripe and, and they're gone unless I sick the chihuahuas on them. Um, I don't, I don't really know what to do with the runners yet. Uh, so my plants are just big enough where they're starting to produce some strawberries. Uh, I'm guessing you, you can do like you do regular ones and just put them in a little soil and cover them up and get them the root. Um, and then transfer them to crack if you want to try it like that. But this is actually my first year. So I'll do a video on that coming up, letting you know what, what I've done. And if any of you, anybody else out there, wants to share like different things you've been growing, you know, that you don't see on my channel that other people, you know, would find um, as good information. Go ahead and share it if you please. Let's see what else is going on here. When you get a chance to add Instagram link to YouTube channel so anyone can find you. That is awesome. Okay. Yeah, and anybody that I made a mod to, if you want to drop your your link to your your channel or your Instagram, go ahead and do that. And that's that. All right, if everybody's uh, signed up, been going about an hour and a half, I'm going to go ahead and let you all go. We'll do this again next week. And uh, if I get time during the, during the week, I might just jump on and just do a quick little uh, Q&A or just, just chat with you all for, for a couple of minutes. But we're going to let this go for a week, so we'll be back next Friday, and we'll tell you who won. In the meantime, if you guys know anybody who likes some grow lights, send them over here or just get that link to the, the Gleam and go ahead and sign up over there, and it's going to be fun. I'm really excited to see what you guys are going to do with it. Like I said, if you win it, Take a picture, tag us. My hydros are doing exceptionally well in the heat in Atlanta. That's awesome to hear, Donna. I was worried it would get too hot outdoors, but they have the most fruit in them than the ones in the garden. They have more fruit than the ones in the garden. That's cool. And do you have a channel, Donna, or do you do you post anywhere? Um, or if you go to Facebook, there's Keep On Growing on Facebook. I think on all my other videos, it's in the description. I didn't put it in this one. But people go in there and they they post little pictures. It doesn't matter if you're you're doing crack key or off grid hydroponics or or what. If you're doing traditional stuff too, anybody in the chat, just head over there and do that too. Um, show me pictures. It's just awesome seeing everybody's pictures. Thanks for the noodle technique. No problem. Um, art is fun in the comments right over there. Y'all thank her. She I I was trying to figure stuff out and I, I was using craft foam yoga mats all kinds of crazy stuff and she s saw the pool noodle one day and she was like hey that's like brown it looks like the the cloning collars we're getting she goes would that work and 
and I gave it a try. So she's the one who right down there in the chat gave me the uh, idea. I'm doing side by side spinach variety tests. Cool. Yeah. Let us know, Janine. I love seeing anybody experiment. Like I said, all the stuff that I've done is just from years and years of just trying different things and experimenting. And it's just fun. Thanks, Mike. No problem, Brad. Really appreciate that. I mean, that's just awesome of you to give away two grow lights like that. So um, y'all see Brad there. It, I know that a lot of you already know him. The people who don't know him, you got to go check out what he's doing. It's just, it's just fantastic. And let's see. Take care, everyone. Have a great weekend. Okay, everybody stand by. Take care. Great work, Mike and Keeley. Appreciate it. Appreciate it, Pepe. And really appreciate the super chat. have to tell you Facebook groups you have going. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just to keep on growing. I think right now I've got to keep on growing page, uh, but basically just that. So everybody can just kind of say bye. I'm just going to wrap it up. Like I said, y'all get down there, sign up for it. Um, if anybody has trouble with that, email me and I'll walk you through it. And we'll be back like next week. That was fun. Thanks. Nice community. All right. Good night, Karen. See you later. And big hugs, Pepe. Yep. All right, cool. Y'all are lovely people. I love it. Uh, I enjoy growing. I love uh, everybody just coming in here like a community and, and uh, helping each other. So we're going to go on back uh, next Friday. We'll see y'all. And y'all lift inspire. Keep on growing and be the change. All right, Mr. Doozy out. Love y'all.